What we're going to practice is how to rank nucleophilicity and SN2 reactivity. Now these two concepts are very tied, deeply tied together. Nucleophilicity has to do with your reagent and how likely it is to do an SN2 reaction. An SN2 reactivity has to do with your substrate and how likely it is to undergo SN2 reactions. Now, just as a recap, SN2 reactions is when your reagent directly attacks your substrate from behind and basically replaces that leaving group in the position at which it is. So, some of the things to consider with nucleophilicity is does it have a negative charge? The other thing you have to notice is what's its electronegativity of the atom? If it's less electronegative, it's more likely going to attack the substrate since it wants to get rid of that negative charge. The third thing to consider is the size. Is it bigger? Because if it's bigger, it's more polarizable, meaning that it's more likely to expand or stretch its electron cloud in order to attach to the substrate. So the things we have to consider nucleophilicity. So let's start looking at this. So over here, we have a negative charge on an oxygen with just a primary carbon attached to it. Here we have zero charge on the oxygen attached to a carbon that's tertiary. And then we have a negative charge on this nitrogen. And the way I'm telling you that we have a negative charge is through the sodium ion. Whenever you see sodium, that means there's a positive charge on sodium, meaning there's a negative charge on the other atom. So there's a negative charge on nitrogen here, a negative charge on this phosphorus here, and then a negative charge on this oxygen again. So whatever is negatively charged is going to be the most nucleophilic. And since we have one that's not negatively charged at all, that's going to be our least nucleophilic. Now, or we're going to compare the oxygen with the nitrogen. Oxygen, is it more electronegative? Yes, it is. So oxygen with a negative charge is less nucleophilic than nitrogen with a negative charge. Think about it like acidity. Ni with nitrogen with a negative charge is not as stable as an oxygen with a negative charge. So nitrogen is going to be more nucleophilic than oxygen. Then let's compare this nitrogen with a negative charge to this phosphorus. What's the difference between the two? Well, phosphorus is down the same group. So phosphorus is bigger. If it's bigger, it's more polarizable, meaning it is more nucleophilic. Now, this last thing you have to compare with is this oxygen to this other oxygen. What's the difference? Well, this oxygen is connected to a primary carbon. So let me label this. This is simply a primary carbon, while this one is a tertiary carbon. Now, tertiary carbon means that you have steric hindrance. And steric hindrance implies that it'll be harder for this reagent to go and attack the substrate. So if we were to rank this, we said that phosphorus was more nucleophilic than nitrogen, which is more nucleophilic than our oxygen, which was more nucleophilic than our tertiary oxygen with a negative charge. So that's for our first line of examples. A second line of examples, we have the negative charge in this nitrogen, another nitrogen negative charge, another nitrogen negative charge, an oxygen, and then another oxygen. So they all have negative charges, good. Now the difference is that we have nitrogens on this side and oxygens on this side. And like we said in the previous example, nitrogen is more nucleophilic. So we're gonna look among these three. Now, which one is more nucleophilic? Well, this one has fluorines on it, and this one has chlorines, and this one doesn't have anything. Well, what do you think these fluorines and chlorines can do? Well, remember something called inductive effect? What they're doing is they're pulling away that electron density. They are electronegative atoms, so they pull that electron density towards them. So the negative charge on the nitrogen is less. We have a smaller negative charge. Now, if we have a smaller negative charge, that means we're going to become less nucleophilic because the nitrogen is becoming more stable. It's less likely to react. So, the most likely to react is the nitrogen without any inductive effect. And the least likely to react among these three is the fluorine, uh, the ones with the fluorines, because that fluorine is really electronegative. It's pulling away that electron density. So that's how we're going to rank among these three. Now, what's the difference between these two? Like in the previous example, this one is only connected to a secondary carbon. I'll label it here. While this one's connected to a quaternary carbon. So a quaternary, or actually not quaternary, sorry, tertiary carbon. So this carbon has one, two, three connections to other carbons. So it's going to be sterically hindered. And my bad on this first one. All right, restart. This one is a primary carbon. It's connected to one attachment. 
And this one is a tertiary carbon connected to three different attachments. And if you're sterically hindered, you're less likely to attack. So ranking this it will be four and five. Then let's do SN2 reactivity. So what is SN2 reactivity? How does it work? Well, we are looking at two things. The leaving group, aka the group that we see over here, this functional group that's going to leave. And number two, the neighbors. So we're going to look at the neighbors of the leaving group. So is it sterically hindered? And then the third thing we're going to look at is the actual carbon itself that it's attached to. Is it primary, secondary, tertiary? So let's just start labeling them. So this carbon right here is attached to another carbon, just one. So it's a primary. Now I'll get back to it in a second. There's something special about this one. And this other one, we also have just one connection. So it's also primary. This one is secondary. This one is secondary. And then this one is primary. Now, what's the difference between this primary and this primary? Well, look at the neighbor. The neighbor over here has how many connections? It has one, two, three, four connections. This is a quaternary carbon. Whenever you see a bromine or a chlorine or, or an iodine at least connected, or a leaving group just in general, connected to a primary carbon but next to a quaternary, it is extremely sterically hindered. It's almost impossible to do SN2 reactions. It's really hard because as we know, the reagent, the, R, the reagent or the nucleophile will say, it has to go from behind and attack. And it's really hard to attack this carbon over here when there's this all the steric hindrance in the way. So this is going to be the least likely to go through SN2 reactions. Now, these two primaries, they're probably most likely to go through the reaction. So what's the difference in them? Well, we have the leaving group. Bromine is a better leaving group than chlorine because it's down the periodic table. It's a larger group. It's more polarizable. It can easily handle a negative charge better than chlorine. So this is going to be number one. This is two. And then as we're comparing these two, like we said, bromine is a better leaving group. So this is three and this is four. Now, what about this last example? Well, we have... A secondary carbon here on this chlorine. This is a primary for bromine. This iodine right here is also a primary. This bromine is a secondary and then this bromine is a primary but look what's next to it. We have a carbon that has one, two, three, four attachments. This carbon right here is a quaternary. So we're going to put that as least reactive because it's very sterically hindered. We're going to look at our primary carbons over here which is these two. And then we have iodine compared to bromine. Iodine is a better leaving group. It's down the periodic table lower than bromine. So this is one, this will be two. And then comparing this, the two secondary carbons, bromine is a better leaving group than chlorine. So this will be three and this will be four. So this is just a summary of how to rank nucleophilicity and SN2 reactivity.